It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the Ministerial Press Conference of the International Transport Forum Summit 2022. Um, we've been keeping you waiting a little bit, very, very sorry for that, but there were important decisions to take. Uh, and many countries wanted to express themselves, and that's why we exist, um, and that's why we're a little late. We have to be extremely quick, because then is the open ministerial. So in case we have to cut down a little bit on the Q&A, on the questions and answers, don't despair. Uh, just come to me if you want to speak to one of the, one of the ministers or to the Secretary General. We'll organize something, okay? If you don't get to ask a question, I'm sorry about that, but we are very constrained with time. Secretary, sorry. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, without further ado, um, I don't think I need to present the gentlemen who are on the podium, but I'll do it anyway. Mr. Mohamed Abdel Jalil is the Minister of Morocco and presides over the summit, and his role will be to uh, tell us a little bit what just happened behind closed doors. Um, Grant, Secretary Grant Chops, the Right Honourable Grant Chops, is the um, Secretary of State for Transport of the United Kingdom, and the UK will um, take over the presidency from Morocco. So after this press conference, we'll have actually a photo shoot outside with a shake hand. So for those of you who are also picture journalists, that's a great opportunity. We have with us Mr. Lang, State Secretary Lang from Cambodia, and I will not give you the news, that's for the President, uh, why he is here. And then we have Secretary General Yang Tae Kim, and there's also news about him. I hand over to M Minister Abdel Jalil. Thank you so much. I'll uh, give my uh, speech in French, so I'll let you take your helmets for those who need. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. The translation channels are here, I think. Yeah. Um, thank you. Welcome to this conference. Thank you very much and a warm welcome to this press conference. This is the press conference after the uh, minister's session, and I am happy to deliver the results. First of all, we will be able to welcome a new member state, Cambodia, and that means that we have 64 member countries. I would like to thank the minister, the state secretary of Cambodia, Mr. Leng. Thank you so much for joining the ITF. And I would now like to hand over to Mr. Leng. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning to everyone. Allow me first to convey my senior, senior minister and excellency, Son Chan Thol. Minister of Public Transport of the Kingdom of Cambodia. Appreciation to the Secretary and the Council of Ministers for facilitating our membership application and the, um, admitting us to become the 64th member of this body. Cambodia is delighted to join this somewhat transport body and we believe that we will be able to gain and share experience and best practices with all members to make our transport more efficient sustainable and resilient in our country and beyond. We are looking forward to working closely with our members and the Secretariat to pursue in our mission. Allow me to highlight some of our transport development. After the genocide regime 1975-1979, our government leveraged our road infrastructure to rebuild out the country. Under some like Prime Minister Hun Sen, we win policy which led to the full reconciliation and peace. And with the financial system from the uh, development partner, they have been rehabilitating, uh, improving, and building road and bridge, railways, port and airport, to cope with our steady economic growth. According to economic forecasts, Cambodia will become the upper middle income country by 2030 and high income by 2050. Cambodia aligned herself with the fourth industrial revolution in particular in transport. We have introduced numerous supporting automatic system and application to deliver more convenient, flexible, and effective services our season, including online vehicle session and driving license. Cambodia firmly attached herself to the climate change agenda. In transport, 
we are working to promote the use of EV through reducing its import tax up to 50%. And in this early stage, we have worked with our development partner to install public EV charging station in certain places. We are also preparing master plan on multimodal intermodal transport connectivity and logistics system, which set out um, an ambitious multi-year strategy for Cambodia Thai's transport and logistics sector to be improved, upgrade, and develop and integrate with the global supply chain. This development aims to enhance connectivity and promote efficient, and sustainable, and resilient logistics and supply chain to ensure sustainable economic growth and in the inclusive society of our country and the world. And I'm glad that our work are in align with the theme of this year, Transport for Inclusive Society. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Je voudrais maintenant féliciter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would now like to congratulate Mr. Yong Tae Kim. I would like to congratulate you on being re-elected for a second term as a Secretary General of the International Transport Forum. This shows the great confidence and trust we have in him, and I'd like to hand over to you now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your trust and confidence. And it's an immense honor to have been elected to a second term as Secretary General of the International Transport Forum. The world and it, with it the ITF has faced grave challenges during my first term. And a global pandemic and a world that involves ITF community have caused unprecedented strains. So much energy has gone into addressing these unforeseen circumstances. As a result, some strategic initiatives for the organization are still buds rather than blossoms. I'm delighted and humbled that ministers are offering me the opportunity to continue to nourish them. And I take today's vote for me to signify three things. First, the member countries feel the ITF has shown itself capable of coping with crises. Second, the member countries are content with the general direction in which ITF has developed during my first mandate. And significant progress has been made. In fact, when I became Secretary General in 2017, ITF had 59 member countries. Here today, we welcome Cambodia as our 64th member countries, the first country from Southeast Asia. What could demonstrate the ITF's relevance and impact better than governments wishing to join? The thirdly, I also take my re-election as a badge of trust in the agenda for ITF's strategic development. Today, before the Council of Ministers of Transport, I laid out an amb ambitious program for my second mandate that rests on five pillars. Intensified global outreach, the more active interaction with members, enhanced visibility, ensure high efficiency, and finally, I will put a strong focus on making ITF more resilient in the face of risks and uncertainties in this troubled time. So delivering on this agenda is my obligation and one that I'm deeply committed to. Again, I would like to thank ministers for their confidence and trust. I'm looking forward to reporting on the progress at the next ITF summit. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Secrétaire Général. Je voudrais, avant de donner la Thank you very much, State and General Secretary. Before I hand over to Grant Chaps, I'd like to say that our presidency has been a great honor for us. It was a great asset. And as the Minister for Transport and Logistics, I'd like to thank all of the participants for the discussions on sustainable transport within the ITF. We have built relationships. And we have um, worked hard to establish a more sustainable transport system in our country. And I now hand over to Grant Chaps, the State Secretary for Transport in the United Kingdom. And I want to wish you all the best for your presidency. To, to you and to everyone, congratulations to Cambodia.
Cambodia and to use the Secretary General on a well-deserved uh, second term. Uh, it's an honor for the United Kingdom to be taking over the presidency of the International Transport Forum for the next year. And I'd like to sincerely thank uh, Morocco for the important leadership that you and your country has provided. It's been uh, excellent work uh, that you've overseen and you've set the bar very high uh, for the United Kingdom, for which I don't thank you. No but uh, <laughs> but uh, I think... Uh, no the forum's um, most fundamental principles that we work in transport to improve people's lives has been, um, it, it has been emphasized uh, through your leadership. And with that in mind, I wanted to set out the five key campaign priorities for the United Kingdom for the year ahead, which in no way conflict with the Secretary General. In fact, they build on the five priorities that the Secretary General has outlined. And first, Greener transport, decarbonizing transport uh, and freight and delivering on our COP26 Glasgow commitments globally to reach net zero by 2050. Second, uh, connected transport to strengthen infrastructure and help countries back from COVID-19. Third, innovative transport, developing technologies and transforming the future of mobility. Fourth, safe and resilient transport, with a particular focus on the UN target to half the number of global deaths and injuries from road traffic uh, accidents. And finally, inclusive transport, making transport accessible and affordable for all, regardless of gender and disability. We believe these five priority campaigns are well suited for our presidency and they reflect the core principles of the UK's Department for Transport as well. And because First and foremost, they'll improve people's lives by making journeys easier, by creating jobs and economic growth, by tackling climate change and population, and pollution rather, not population, and by reducing the unacceptably high toll of road accident victims globally. They balance the short-term measures and they'll make a difference to the current generation, therefore, of transport users, but they're also a vision for the future. And they acknowledge the extraordinary opportunities that we must seize as we enter a period of unprecedented change in the transport industry. But I do want to put on record that in accepting the presidency, the United Kingdom also acknowledges our responsibilities towards Ukraine. An ITF member that has seen its transport infrastructure systematically destroyed by a completely unprovoked aggression of Russia supported by the Belarusian regime. And like most of the world, we've reacted with horror and repugnance to the invasion and to the appalling suffering of the Ukrainian people. And that's why we're working with allies multilaterally to isolate Russia on the international stage, as well as imposing a comprehensive package of sanctions Today, I can announce that the British government is taking further action. We're going to be sanctioning Russians, Russia's flagship carrier, Aeroflot, along with Rosia and Ural Airlines. And this means they'll be unable to use their expensive landing slots at UK airports. And these actions will prevent Russia from being able to sell their slots, which would otherwise be able to be cashed in for up to 50 million pounds. The targeted demolition of Ukraine's uh, transport network clearly contravenes the very foundations upon which the ITF has been built. Therefore, the UK, together with like-minded group of countries, has produced and signed the so-called call to action document, which sets out our position at this year's summit and was signed here yesterday. It calls upon the Russian Federation to immediately cease its military attacks and withdraw its forces from all Ukrainian territory. It condemns the heinous acts and atrocities committed against the civilian population. And it commits to ending all ITF cooperation with the Russian Federation and the Belarusian regime. We recognize that the ITF's general rules need to be adapted to respond to circumstances in Ukraine. So we commit to re-examining and developing general rules in a way that would strengthen the organization, and create the flexibility to deal with similar challenges if they occurred again in the future. And in particular, we will rally our combined strength and ITF members to support those 
to help to rebuild Ukraine's transport infrastructure, and in doing so, help rebuild a shattered nation. So in closing, uh, can I thank the International Transport Forum once again uh, for hosting an excellent summit uh, this past few days. We're delighted to be privileged to take on the presidency from Morocco. We'll do everything we can to strengthen the organization, its influence it has in the world at this crucial time for transport, and we very much look forward to welcoming many of you to London in October for the ITF autumn meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary of State. It, I, it's tough for me, but I have to tell you we don't have time for questions. I'm really, really, really sorry. Um, we can, I, I'm, I offer myself as your, um, what's the word, um, something you can beat up um, and try to arrange uh, interviews with ministers afterwards. We have to take the photos. This is the transition moment, and we don't want to miss that. You're welcome to join us outside at the photo wall to take your own pictures. Thank you so much for being here, and sorry for being late. Thank you.